welcome to a new chapter on reproductive system. In this chapter, there are five learning objectives. First learning objective is to compare and describe a sexual and sexual reproduction process. Number two, compare and describe external and internal fertilization. Next, describe reproduction in vertebrates. Describe the human gametogenesis process. Describe pregnancy and human development. Types of reproduction in plants. There are two modes of reproduction in plants, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction involves new plants arise through reproductive parts, and these involve the fusion of gametes resulting in offspring that genetically different from the parent. A sexual reproduction involves new plants arise from vegetative parts of an existing plant, and the new organism will be genetically identical to the parent. It is like clone of the mother plant. Asexual reproduction in plants. Plants have two main types of asexual reproduction. First is vegetative propagation or vegetative reproduction. It is a type of asexual reproduction in plants involving the production of a new plant from vegetative structures. In this slide, you can see examples of vegetative structures such as rhizome, bulbs, comb, suckers, plantlets, stolon, and tuber. Another type of asexual reproduction in plants is apomaxis. Some plants can produce seeds without fertilization. So this method of reproduction is known as apomaxis. So seed produced in this way will give rise to individuals that are genetically identical to the parent. The seed is deployed in nature, will give rise to a new individual which is deployed, but they have the same genetic material. Next, we have sexual reproduction in plants. Sexual reproduction in plants include meiosis and the fusion of egg and sperm cells in a process known as fertilization. Fertilization occurs within the flower's ovary. After fertilization, flowering plants produce seeds inside fruit. So we can conclude that seeds is the product of sexual reproduction. The seeds will germinate to produce new plant. Okay, now let's take a look at reproductive parts of flower. There are two main parts of flower, the stamen part and the pistil. Stamen is the male reproductive part. Pistil or carpel is the female reproductive part. Pistil consists of stigma, style, and ovary. And stamen consists of enter and filament. In this diagram, you can see flowering plant in diploid state. It will undergo meiosis, producing microspore and megaspore. Microspore is in haploid state, undergo mitosis and differentiation into male gametophyte and turn into sperm cells. There are two sperm cells produced. For megaspore, it will form female gametophyte, producing egg cell. The fusion between sperm cells and egg cell will produce zygote. In this diagram, we can see pollen grain here from another plant lands on stigma. Pollen tube grows from pollen grain. Pollen tube grows from pollen grain down the style to the microfile and into the ovule. There are two sperm cells. One will fertilize the egg cell to form zygote and will develop into embryo. The other sperm will fuse with polar nuclei in the middle, forming endosperm. The ovule will develop into seeds 
and the ovary will develop into fruit. Types of reproduction in animals Similar to plants, there are two modes of reproduction in animals, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. So in this slide, I will explain about asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction involves one parent and there is no fertilization occurs and involve mitotic division. Offspring will be identical to the parent except if mutation occur. And it has the advantage of being the fastest and the most efficient way of reproducing compared to sexual reproduction. There are four types of asexual reproduction in animals, binary fission, fragmentation, budding, and parthenogenesis. In binary fission, parents divide into two cells of the same size. Each part will become a separate but identical organism. Example, unicellular organisms such as bacteria, amoeba, paramecium, and some algae. In budding, parents produce bud and the bud gets detached and developed into offspring which is identical to parent. The offspring detach or remain joined, example, cnidarian and sponges. The next type of asexual reproduction is fragmentation. Fragmentation occurs when the body of parent break into several pieces. Each piece regenerates the missing parts and develop into a whole animal. Examples are flatworms, nematodes, and annelids. Parthenogenesis is a form of reproduction in which an egg can develop into an embryo without being fertilized by a sperm. So, a female produces offspring from an unfertilized egg, and this will develop into a haploid adult. And this is common among insects such as honeybees and other arthropods. In most species, parthenogenesis can alternate with a period of sexual reproduction. Okay, let's take a look at parthenogenesis in bees. So here we have queen bees. Queen lay eggs. Fertilized egg will be deployed and turn into female offspring, which become worker or queen. The unfertilized egg, which is in haploid condition, will produce male offspring known as drone. Example of parthenogenesis in whiptail species. When there is no males in society, parthenogenesis can take place, meaning that there is no fertilization. Even though there is only one gender, a courtship ritual is still required. One female will take the part of a male and the other will take the role of a female. And the two lizards can also switch role based on hormone. Estrogen promotes female behavior. Progesterone stimulates the male behavior. Without mating, few eggs will be released. Sexual reproduction in animals. As we all know, sexual reproduction involves fusion of sperm and egg through fertilization. Egg is large and non-motile with nutrients. Sperm is small and motile. Hermaproditism is a type of reproduction in animals. Uh, in this type of reproduction, organism can have both male and female reproductive organs. There are two types of hermaproditism, simultaneously hermaproditic or sequentially hermaproditic. In simultaneously hermaproditic, individual is both male and female at the same time. 
although the ripening of the gonads may be sequential to prevent unnecessary self-fertilization. Most free-living flatworms are hermaphrodites that reproduce sexually. Being a hermaphrodite animal is advantage, especially for sessile or burrowing animals and parasites that face difficulties in meeting members of the opposite sex. Example is flatworm. Flatworm has the ovary and testes, so they are capable of self-fertilization. Thus, less energy is required to seek out a breeding partner. Another example of animals that undergo hermaphroditism is earthworms and garden snails. The next types of hermaphroditism is sequential hermaphroditism. In sequential hermaphroditism, individual is born with one sex and change sex at some point in their life. A change from female to male is called protogeny and a change from male to female is called protoandry. And this happens under social control. For example, in the absence of males in a particular group, the largest female can change into a dominant male, and this is common among reef fish. Okay, based on our previous discussion on sexual and asexual reproduction in plants and animals, we can conclude that sexual reproduction involves fusion of male and female gametes, while asexual reproduction involves no fusion of gametes. In sexual reproduction, parent and offspring are not identical, but parent and offspring are identical in a sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction also produce high genetic variability, and this genetic diversity increase chances of survival in an unstable environment, while a sexual reproduction produce no genetic variability. Genetic uniformity leads to susceptibility to disease.